Good day to you. Once again, it's just so good to be with you on this program. My dear friend, it is the Christmas season. So I'm going to say to you, please have a blessed Christmas. Now I'm going to start off by reading you the Christmas story, and then I want to speak to you about it. You know, folks, so often people are more concerned about what they're going to receive than what they're going to give. I want to tell you that this is the season, not only of receiving, but it's the season of giving. Okay? The Lord says it's more blessed to give than to receive. And that's an actual fact. If we change our mindset from this give me, give me, give me, and start to think about giving, we're going to have a blessed Christmas. Because that's what Jesus did. He gave everything, didn't he? Let's go to the Word of God. If you've got your agricultural manual with you, your Bible, will you turn with me please to the Gospel of Matthew? I'm going to read from uh, chapter 1 and from verse 18, the Word of God. And this is what it says. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed, that's engaged, to Joseph, before they came together, before they slept together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. There's the first miracle. Before they even got married, she was already pregnant. That is the first miracle. I want to say one thing to you about Christianity. You cannot be a Christian if you have no faith. That's why the early church, they were called either believers, not Christians, that came from the Romans later, either believers or they were the church on the way. They were the people of the way. Which way? The way of Christ. Okay? We need faith. Ladies and gentlemen, please listen to me. In a world where everything has to be explained, and we have to have a proof of everything, otherwise we don't believe it, be careful for that one. Because I want to tell you, this ain't no fairy tale. I'm reading to you about life. Before Mary and Joseph came together, she was already found with child. That's the first gift from God to you and to me. Okay? So we need to believe that. If you can't believe that, I have to question your faith. I know there are some people that um, are preachers who will try and explain that away. There's no explaining about it. It was a miracle. It was through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit met with Mary. I've been to that, that cave. I've been there in Nazareth where the archangel Gabriel came down and he spoke to Mary and he told Mary what was going to happen. Mary, the mother of Jesus, is very special in my life. I want to qualify something else. She is not divine. What does that mean, Angus? She is not um, like Jesus who came from heaven. She is, she is an ordinary woman, just like you and me, but the most blessed woman that has ever lived. She had the privilege of carrying God in her womb for nine months. Oh, folks, I want to tell you something now. There is no woman ever lived that has had that privilege. Okay? So she gave her life for Christ. It changed everything for her. She gave everything away. She gave away her integrity, her reputation, everything in the village. You can imagine what the neighbors were saying with this young girl, probably only 14, 15 years old. Do you know that Mary's going to have a baby? No way, she's not. Because she's not even married yet to the carpenter, Joseph. See, can you imagine that? And she was prepared to go through all of that. And then she had a life, folks, I want to tell you. She dedicated her life to looking after God. Can you imagine when he was growing up and she was teaching him how to use a knife and fork? How she was teaching him how to make his bed? How she was teaching him about life? Mary! I tell you what, I'm looking forward to meeting Mary in heaven. But I want to tell you, she is, she is not divine. Okay? 
The way we pray to God is this way as believers. We pray to the Father through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's how we pray. We don't pray to anyone else, folks. There is no name, no other name. Jesus said in, uh, if you look at the Gospel of John chapter 14, verse 6, He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will go to the Father but by me. John chapter 14, verse 6. That's what the Word says. You need to get to know the Word, sir. That's why you've got so much confusion in your life. That's why you keep asking questions. Stop asking questions and start learning to read the Bible. Okay? So Mary became pregnant before she got married, before she slept with Joseph, and Joseph never slept with her until Jesus was born. And then after that, she had other children as well. Jesus had brothers and sisters. So I'm talking to you about the season of giving. So Angus, what did Mary give? She gave everything. She gave her whole life to God to raise up Jesus Christ. And what a great job she did. Let's carry on a little bit further. Isn't that exciting, Christmas time? Christmas time is a time for believers it's a time for people of faith. And I want to tell you, I've just come from Europe. I've just come back. Friends, you need to nail your colors to the mast. Either you believe or you don't believe. There is no in between. Do not tell me all roads lead to heaven. There's no in the Bible that says that. Do not tell me that good people go to heaven. There's no way in the Bible that it says that. Okay? Jesus is the way. And faith is the only way we get to heaven. That's the bottom line. Now, even as I'm talking to you, some of you are getting a bit upset with me. Please don't do that. I love you. That's why we make this program. If this is going to be the best Christmas of your life, you need to start to give. Give what, Angus? First of all, give of your life. Start to believe that this is the Word of God. It's just one miracle after another, this whole Bible. I've just returned from Israel in September. I want to tell you, every time I go there, man, there's just something happens in my life. When I walk in the footsteps of Jesus. What a miracle. Okay, so we continue. And it says, and, they, and uh, before they came together, right, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man. That means being an upright man. You see, in those days to be a carpenter, was like a profession. I mean, he was a cut above the average. He wasn't just one of the working class. No, no, no. He was very respected. He made tables, chairs, cabinets. Being a just man, it says. Eh? Being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example because he loved her, was minded to put her away secretly. You know why? Because in those days, if you were found to be pregnant and you were not married, they would stone you to death. And he loved Mary, so he was going to hide her, put her away secretly so that no one would speak about her. But while he thought about these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. See, another miracle. Has the Lord ever spoken to you in a dream? Well, the Bible says in the last days, old men will dream dreams. Young men will see visions. This is the time, folks. I've seen it. You know. I was in Engedi down in the Dead Sea. A year ago, I witnessed a physical manifestation, a visit of the Holy Spirit, where He nearly blew me off the platform. I believe in miracles. Okay? But while He thought about these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, don't be concerned that your fiancé has been unfaithful to you. Joseph, don't think that she's been sleeping around. The baby in her womb was placed there by the Holy Ghost. That was what he received in a dream. Isn't that amazing? We go to verse 21. And she will bring forth a son, and you, Joseph, shall call his name Jesus. That's an interesting point. Who gave the Messiah his name, Jesus? It was his father, Joseph. 
It wasn't anybody else. It wasn't Mary. It wasn't the wise men. It, was, it wasn't any of the prophets. It was the carpenter himself. I love Joseph. I, I want to be honest with you dads, all the dads watching this program at Christmas time. Sometimes I feel Joseph doesn't get enough mention, you know, in the Word of God. Joseph was an upright man. He named that baby Jesus because the, 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 the angel, Gabriel, told him to call him Jesus. And what does that mean? It means Savior. Okay? And he will save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet saying, Behold, a virgin, that's a lady who's never ever had any interaction with any man, a virgin, shall be with child and bear a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife. He didn't cast her away. He didn't say, well, that's it. The relationship's off. No, no, he married her and did not know her. He had no rela physical relationship with her whatsoever until she brought forth her firstborn son and his name was called Jesus. Isn't that a beautiful story? Isn't that a miraculous story? Isn't that a story that can just make you just rejoice? My dear friend, without faith, you cannot follow Jesus. Because if you cannot believe what I've just read, you're not a Christian. That's right. And what troubles me a lot is a lot of preachers try and explain all these things away. I want to tell you that this is the immaculate conception. This is a miracle which is more miraculous than any other miracle than even parting of the Red Sea. This miracle. And that's why a lot of men will not believe. I want to say to somebody watching this program now, your theology must move from here to here. If it's not a hard thing, it will never work. Okay? We have got to believe that this book was written by men under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. I want to tell you, Billy Graham probably the greatest modern-day evangelist of all times. I've read every one of his books. He's preached to millions and millions of people. When he was a young theologian at Bible College, he started to question some of the, the, the stories in this book because they just didn't make sense. They didn't add up. So one night he went out into the forest with his Bible, and he put his Bible on a stump, on a, on a pine stump, a tree that had been cut off, and he put it on top of the stump, and then he said to the Lord, Lord... I don't understand everything in this Bible, but I'm making a decision today that I'm going to believe this Word as the Word of God. I'm going to believe that this Word comes straight from heaven. And with that, he went out, and, he, and the rest is history. I know in my own life, without faith, I cannot please God. And the Bible says, and he who believes must believe that he is and that he's the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. I want to say to you this Christmas, I want to give you a gift. I want to say to you, Shalom. I want to say to you, the peace of Jesus be with you, madam, sir, young man, young lady. What more? This whole world is craving for peace. And it is more hectic than it's ever been since the time of Adam. The whole world is chasing after peace. Well, I want to tell you something. That babe that was born in that stable in Bethlehem, his name is the Prince of Peace. I love it. He's a friend to me that sticks closer than a brother. You see, I can't get into a theological debate with any man because I don't know that much about theology. You see, if you, you can know this book from cover to cover. What does that make you? It makes you a historian. <laughs> That's right. A historian. See, I don't know the book as well as the author. I know the author of this book. How, Angus? Because he lives inside of my heart. Because when I had no peace, and I was restless, and I couldn't sleep at night, and I thought I was going off my head, 
and I would go to the pub and I would drink as much beer as I could and it made no difference to me. It only gave me a headache the next day, a big headache, and cost me a lot of money. And the day that I accepted this babe in the manger as my Lord and Savior, my life was transformed. I have got more tests. I have been stretched more now than I've ever been stretched in my life, and yet I've got peace. Now, how does that happen? It's a miracle. Come unto me, all of you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, for my burden is light. Matthew chapter 11, 28. I want to say to you today that the greatest Christmas present that you can give anybody else is to give them the peace of Jesus. In Zulu, we say, Ukutula. That's peace. In Afrikaans, we say, Freda. In English, we say, Peace. And in Hebrew, we say, Shalom. You know that when Jesus walked into a house, that was his greeting. He'd walk in and he'd say, Shalom. Can you imagine the peace that must have just come over that place? Oh, my friends, don't run all over the place this Christmas. Sit down and rest and be at peace. Take this story and read it to your children. It's more exciting than Batman, Superman, and any other man. <laughs> We're talking about the Son of God. Sit down with your teenage children and explain this to them. It'll blow them away, as they say. Dad, how can a young virgin become pregnant? It's a miracle. The archangel Gabriel came down when the young virgin was sleeping and told her what was going to happen. And that's why she wrote that beautiful, beautiful song about how blessed she is. That carpenter, who was an honorable man in the, in the village, he gave away his reputation. He probably became the laughing stock of the district. Look at that young girl. She's hooked him. She's got him around her little finger. Can't he see that she's been sleeping around? She's, got a, she's pregnant. No, no, no. The angel of the Lord visited the carpenter and said, you call his name Jesus. That wife of yours has never slept with anybody. It's a miracle. A gift from God. So the first gift is what? The first gift to you and me is a young virgin who was prepared to pay the price. Her life was never the, never the same again after that. Never. Right up until the crucifixion. Right up until the resurrection. Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Joseph gave up everything. He gave up his name, his reputation. What for? He gave it up for the, for the Son of God. He gave it up for you and for me, Joseph. Okay, you don't hear about Joseph anymore after that, but I want to tell you, Joseph was a very special man, handpicked by God. And then what about the other miracle? Probably the greatest gift of all. Jesus Christ said to his father, I'm going down. I'm going down, Father, to help them. They're struggling. They've got no direction. They've got no mentorship. They have nothing. They don't, they, they're going around in a circle. Just like I heard a cattle that have got nowhere to go. I'm going down. I'm going to show them how to live this life. I'm going to show them how to, how to take pressure. I'm going to show them how to keep faith. I'm going to die for them. I'm going to give them a way out. A way to eternal life. The greatest gift that this world has ever had. You, you might not be a believer. I want to pray for you in a minute. I really do. It's my gift for you. I want to give you the opportunity this Christmas to make Jesus Christ your Savior. See, the most important scripture verse to me in this Bible is the most famous one. It's found in the Gospel of John chapter 3 and verse 16. And this is what it says. For God so loved the world, that's you and me, that he gave his only begotten Son, that's Jesus Christ, that whosoever, that's me, I'm a whosoever, or you a whosoever, whosoever believes in him. See, it's about faith, my friend. Not whosoever has a good soup kitchen, helps the poor, takes care of the needy, goes to church every Sunday, goes to... No, 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 no. Whoever believes, 
For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. There's your gift from us here at this studio. There's your gift and it costs you nothing. It's for free. It's gratis. You're sitting there, madam, and you're saying to me, Angus, I've messed up in my life. I've been through a divorce, maybe two. I'm battling with drugs, Angus. I can't get off the drugs. Angus, I've just lost my job. I've lost my self-confidence. That's why he died for you. He came for sinners like you and me. He came for those who've fallen down and can't get up again. He didn't come for the healthy and the successful and the wealthy and those that are great um, examples. He came for the whosoever's. I want to pray a prayer for the whosoever's. And I want to tell you, I don't care what sin that you have committed. There is no sin that's too big that Jesus can't forgive. So what must we do, Angus? We must do what he said to Bartimaeus. What he said to uh, the men that he prayed for that were sick, that the ones that he raised, go and sin no more. Your sins are forgiven. Oh, but I can't believe that. Well, that's the problem. And that's the thing I want to pray for. You have to. This whole life is about faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. Now, I believe by faith that Jesus is coming again. And he's not going to be riding on a donkey. And he's not going to be born in a stable. He's going to come as the commander of the armies of God. He's going to be riding a white charger, an Arab stallion. He's going to come to judge the, the quick and the dead. He's going to come to divide righteousness from unrighteousness. He's coming as the judge. Folks, we need to get our lives together before then. So I'm going to pray with you. And I'm going to pray that the Lord today will fill you with faith. That's my gift to you. I can't give you anything else. You don't need anything else. If you've got faith the size of one mustard seed, you can tell that mountain to be moved into the sea. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for Christmas time time of giving. Thank you, Lord, for Joseph, the carpenter. Thank you for Mary, that beautiful young virgin. Thank you for our Savior. And Father, we want to thank you for your graciousness to us. You gave us a gift that we can never repay. All you ask of us, if you love me, believe and love one another. Holy Spirit, come and visit us in a very special, peaceful way this Christmas. And we confess, Lord, that if we've committed any sins, especially the sin of unbelief, please forgive us and cleanse us and give us new life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, there we have it. You've prayed that prayer. Go out and believe it and take the peace of God to a world that's troubled. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and have a lovely Christmas. Goodbye. Dankie dat jy hierdie week se episode van Koring Aar met oom Angus Bakken gekyk het. Ons vertrou dat jy daardeur geseen is. Vir meer inligting oor Angus Bakken, Shalom Ministries of komende gebeure, besoek gerus www.angusbakken.co.za Jy kan ook die Ankel Angus Facebook blad gaan like of volg hom op Twitter. Die selfde man